Hey, I'm Scott. Today you may remember my friend, the Ryobi Dethatcher Scarifier Aerator. And today we're going to switch it from two of these 18 volts to one of these 40 volts on Dad It Yourself. Okay, so here's my Ryobi Dethatcher Scarifier Aerator that I picked up from Amazon UK, got a year ago now. Um, one of my most popular videos on YouTube. Uh, over 165,000 views. Um, a lot of people are asking, hey, when's this thing going to become to the United States? Well, as of March 21st, my Ryobi brand manager told me that these are in the warehouse. They are working their way into Home Depot distribution and they will be available. So the weird part about this being a European model, but from what I'm being told, the US model as well, is it uses two 18 volt batteries. And what I found is four amp and bigger are what you need to use in this thing. Not a little in, uh, three amp, eh, it'll probably do it, but not really well, or definitely not a two amp or an amp and a half. But what I like is these big 40 volts. This one's a two and a half amp, but I have a six amp over there. And uh, I like that one too. So, as most of you who are Ryobi lawn fans, you know most of your lawn equipment is 40 volts. And I want to see if I can make this one 40 volts too. So what I have is an old 40 volt charger and two 1.5 amp dead batteries. They're dead, I know, because I got tape on them. And that one, I don't use it anymore because I have the three port now. So, I'm going to cannibalize these parts and see if I can wire them together to make a adapter. And then if that works, I'll probably jump into Fusion 360 or SketchUp and build a 3D model and print one and wire it. Uh, we'll see. But my only challenge I can see is going to be my height clearance. When you put a 40 volt battery in here right now, it almost sits right on the top. So as you can see with that 40 volt battery in there, that's almost right on the top right there. I've only got maybe, I don't know, it's even hard to see, a quarter of an inch of clearance at that, maybe even less. So once I start stacking this stuff up, cutting it apart, uh, it's probably going to be a little taller than this. So I'll probably have to run this thing with this open or do some other modifications and we'll figure it out from there. Okay, here we go. So if you've never taken anything from Ryobi apart, you know it's put together with Torx screws. And these use, looks like a T20 here. And then these are either a T10 or a T15. And I've got all those right here. So let's go ahead and just start taking these things apart. So before I move any further, um, as you saw when I cut the wires, there is a red, a black, and a white wire. And on the board, I had to clear off some insulation, but right here, and I don't know if you can even read that, but red is battery positive, black over here, battery negative, and then the white way over here is just calm. So that's just a communication between this information and the battery for charging purposes, if it's full, if it's not full. But that shouldn't matter to me. So this is going in the trash anyways. Now I know for a fact this is gonna be super hard to see, but inside there are three wires, a red, a black, and a blue. And I'm gonna go with red is battery positive, Black is battery negative and the blue is a calm. Again, I'm gonna cut this over and then I'll read the board once I get it open. I'm gonna use my phone for this one. Look at the difference in these two circuit boards uh, on the batteries, it's pretty interesting. Uh, this one was made in 2014, this one's 2019. Um, and let's see if we can zoom in. So here's the red right there, battery positive. Black over there, battery negative. Blue, it says like T1, and then that's repeated over here. Battery positive, battery negative right there, and then T1 right there. So, 
reds are positive, blacks are negative, and we will move on from there. Okay, just a little experimentation here, just to show you. Got a fully charged 40 volt battery in there. I just put these alligator clips on here just to help me have touch points. And so I can test this. I got the multimeter right there set. And we'll put red on red. Let me show my hands out of the way. Let's put red on red and black on black. And you can see I've got a little over 40 volts. That's a fully charged battery. Okay, experiment number two. Two fully charged 18 volt batteries. Okay, as you can see, they're both fully charged. All right, so I've jumpered them and wired them in series. Plus, negative, plus, negative. Black and red. Okay, here we go. Boom, boom, 39 volts, just shy of 40. Okay, before I go any further, I want to talk about what we call nominal power. All right, these are 18 volt batteries in the Ryobi Ecology. In DeWalt or Milwaukee or even Hart, they may call it a 20 volt battery. As you saw, these things were well over 19 volts each. So this could be a 20 volt battery. Same thing here. This is a 40 volt battery. Well, guess what? Other tool manufacturers call this a 36 volt battery. Okay, there's twice as many cells in this one as there is in this one. That's all it is, okay? So 36 volts equals 40 volts and 18 volts equals 20 volts. So two 18 volt batteries will run a 40 volt tool. All right? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, Pull these old wires out of the battery terminals. Uh, I was able to remove this from the battery head and I'm just putting a new 16 gauge stranded on there. Uh, this is rated for 60 volts. Okay, so I've got all the wire soldered on and all the leads installed back in. Now I'm going to wire this in series and what does that mean? Red to black, red to black, red to black, until you're in the circle. Positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, until you make the circuit. And to do that, just for testing purposes, I'm going to use these Wago connectors. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but these are pretty cool. They have little levers on them. And they are UL rated for electricity, 110, and they work really well when you're connecting solid and strand, or strand to strand, when the twisting doesn't work as well and the wire nuts uh, just won't grab on. So I really like these and they're great because I can remove them and add them back on um, for testing purposes. So we're gonna go ahead and use these for this purpose. There we go, in a circuit. Let's go ahead and put a battery in this and test it. Okay, here we go. So negative side of this one, positive side of this one. Negative side of this one, positive side of this one. 40 volts. All right, I think it's time to put it in the machine and try it out. So I've got it plugged in, and just for safety reasons, there's no blade in here. Everything's good, and it doesn't work. And I already figured out what I did wrong. So I jumpered this to this to this to this. Well, the jumper's actually inside the unit. When you put two batteries in, it does that jumper. So I just need to rewire this to take the jumper out between these two, and it just goes in the positive, out the negative here. So let's try that. Okay, so I have the red coming to the positive of this one, and the black going to the negative of this one, and then these wires are out here. I'm going to go ahead and take these apart and remove these wires because they're just not needed. All right, let's try it now. Well, look at that. We're another thing on a 40 volt battery. Let me clean up this electricity, see if we can get this thing tightened up now. Well, here it is. Cleaned up the wires a little bit, cut down some of the plastic. Use a little super glue, but you guys know super glue doesn't stick to plastic very good. So I did some melding and plastic welding in there to kind of stick it together. And again, this is just a prototype. 
um, but it gives me some really good dimensions for how the 3D printed one would go. Uh, the only concern I have right now is this one looks a little higher. And I may have to yank this apart and cut this down a little more, but we'll see if we can get it pressed in there. Um, you do need to put the battery in first. It's a little hard to get it in there um, once it's out. So let's see if we can get that to seat in there now. It feels like it went in there. And as you can see, the lid doesn't close. So let's see if that works now. You have no idea how excited I am about this. I didn't think this was going to work, and it did. So, it's 10 o'clock at night, so I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow to take this thing out for a test run. See you tomorrow. Okay, next day. After I stopped filming last night, I actually made a couple of modifications. I turned this thing completely around, so now you can come from the outside of the dethatcher and put the battery in. So the battery can be taken in and out while it's uh, the adapter's in. I used... ABS glue and that's way better than the super glue and this thing seems pretty rigid now So let's go ahead and put this in and try it out in the yard Probably help if I put a blade in it. Okay, so did the entire front yard and the battery just started ki kicking out on me. That's a 2.6 amp hour in there. Now, if you guys watched my last video from last year, it took me two 6 amp hours to do this same area. So not only do I get more power out of this, I get just as much runtime out of a smaller battery technically. So I'm super happy with that upgrade. All right, I got to get this cleaned up. We're about to run out of sunlight. So some people say, why dethatch, aerate, and scarify? Well, because all that is in between the plant roots and the rain and the water and the fertilizer and all the good stuff that makes your grass grow. So I do that first thing in the spring, and then I'll do it one more time in the fall right before I put this grass to bed for the winter. So this project was a lot of fun. There was a lot of unknowns. I didn't even know if it was going to work. But it was a lot of fun going through and prototyping and trying different things and seeing what worked and what didn't work. And I finally came up with a solution. Now it's on to 3D printing, trying to get this unit a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner so we can get that cover to close. Who knows? That may happen. That may not. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this video, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notification. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Data yourself.